Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. Today's guest is Aaron Beaver. He's a return guest with us. He's also on staff with us and one of our team members. And we're going to be talking today about how we produce this podcast every week. We're going to talk a little bit about the gear. We're going to talk a little bit about the history, a little bit about how we have made the decisions to produce it the way that we do and give you some tips and pointers if it's something that you're interested in. So a little bit of a how-to behind the scenes of the podcast and we've got behind the scenes shots as well so you can kind of see how things are set up we are glad that you've joined us today we're excited to to have this conversation so grab a notebook grab a cup of coffee and get ready for this conversation we got so much to say we got a podcast to make we're sipping on lattes and it's time for a coffee break Time for a coffee break. Oh, yeah. Aaron, welcome back. Yeah, this is exciting. This is like the fifth or eighth time or something that you've been a guest on the Coffee Break podcast. Something like that. I'm trying to be the I'm trying to be uh, the Alec Baldwin of the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I I don't. If anybody knows, Alec yeah. Baldwin is the most hosted. He's the uh, ho- person who has hosted the most SNLs. Yeah, and I'm trying to be that guy. Okay. As long as that's what you're trying to be known for. That's the Alec Baldwin. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyways, thank you for being here today. Like your glasses, by the way. Well, thank you. I, I put them on just for this. Uh, if you typically listen to the podcast, the audio version on whatever podcast platform that you're on, I would definitely say Highly. this is one that you need to go and check out on YouTube or Facebook. Yeah, I agree. Because this one's going to be cool. Today's conversation, we're going to be talking about how we produce this podcast every week. It's been going on since August of 2018. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Um, man, that's a long time. It is so a we're long coming time. up on the third year. Yeah. Every Tuesday since August of 2018. That's what's crazy. Every Tuesday morning 9 at 9 a.m., a brand new episode goes live. And a lot of people ask, how do you do it? Yep. Why do you do it? Yep. And all that stuff. Well, we've talked about why we do a podcast. There's other episodes, I'm sure, that uh, Jessica can link that in the in the show notes in the description to point back to that. But today we're going to be really kind of talking about the how, and we're going to be showing some behind the scenes yep. about the studio and why we have things set up the way that we do. Now, Aaron, you know, in, in our facility here, we have guests come by all the time. Yep. And uh, they they give a facility tour. Thomas, yeah. our training director, loves to give a facility tour. Yep. The, the tour ends on this end of the building, which is in the studio. Yep. And what is the first question that everybody asked? Like, it, why a podcast studio? Yeah. Why Why does a why, locksmith why does it? Why do they have... Okay, here you go. This is the actual question. Why do y'all have all of this production gear? Yes. And that, 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 that is, is the question. That is the question. And I, I enjoy them coming by because... It really is. I mean, this is the um, kind of the, I mean, I know anybody that listens to this is going to like hate on me, but it's like the fun side because we get to, we get to have a lot of guests in here. We do a lot of production work. We do a lot of work over here, Yeah. but you know, we have a lot of lights, we have cameras, it's, it's a lot of gear. And I think we have some cutaway shots of the gear. So if you're like Chad said, if you're watching or you're listening, find it on Facebook, YouTube, because we're going to show a lot of the under the hood. It's it's a little different today. We've added a couple extra cameras in yep. to kind of show the behind the scenes. Dan has got uh, running the controls over in the control room. Uh, he just uh, he just popped up the behind the scenes camera. So we've got a couple of behind the scenes, which I yep. think is really cool. It shows kind of um, the, the, I don't even know, the expansive nature. Yeah. Now, I want to I go back to, to August of 2018 and probably even before that, um, where Levi and I recorded a couple of test episodes literally in our conference room yep. with a laptop and a couple of microphones sitting on a table. Yep. That's how we started. Yeah. So we didn't start out of the gate with a studio right. like this. And actually, one of the microphones didn't even record. Yes. Do you remember that? <laughs> Again, <laughs> rookie move, right? But the way that it was set up, yeah. it was not actually. It was we thought it was, but it wasn't. Yeah, and but but I think one of the big takeaways that I would hope that people take away from this is we started at a point and then we grew it as this. What we're going to get into a little later as this side of the business grew, and then that's really why we have this much gear. Yeah. So 
which let's answer that question okay. kind of out of the gate. Why does a locksmith company have this much lights, cameras, and yeah. and equipment to record a podcast? Yeah. Why is that the case? We get that question a lot, and a lot of people don't quite understand it. But we have a company uh, which LockDoc Security is the parent company of the lab. And so out of the lab, we have an application division. Mm-hmm. And so Lucas and Aaron, they're in that. And then you also have a video content creation division. And so we service a lot of customers in our industry as well as outside of the industry. So all of the gear is not necessarily for the podcast. Mm-hmm. It's just the podcast was here very early on. Like mm-hmm. you were making videos very early, but you were also doing podcasts. You come from a radio background. All of that kind of the world came you know, collided together. And then at, when I came on, we had some clients that mm-hmm. gave us the opportunity to invest in the equipment mm-hmm. and took us to a level that I, I would like, there are a lot of people that come in here mm-hmm. and that we've had returning guests and they're like, Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. because we started with GoPros mm-hmm. and now we've got two RE 20 great production mics. We've got uh, what's that? A thirty-two channel uh, mixer. Well, I want to get into the gear okay. list in okay. just a little <laughs> bit. So, but the 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 reason that we have all this gear is because there is a a, a division called the Lab at mm-hmm. Lockdoc Security. It is a digital content creation company. So yep. we create videos. I yep. guess digital content can have a lot of different uh, takeaways, but we create videos for our industry and for other clients. Correct. Um, and and if you if you want to find out more about that, again, we'll link that in there. But uh, you can visit our website. It's called Lab dot net, and it's got a lot of that information yep. listed there. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, we also have a, an app development company that's yep. creating some cool web apps. So it's it's kind of all under that whole, and that's that's the what the literally one side of the building yeah. is dedicated to that, and and we we refer to it as the lab. When we first started with the podcast, it was with an intent to share a message with our customers about what we were doing as an organization behind the scenes, not right. necessarily the type of products that we sell, right? but just the actual, what are we doing, implementing, you know, here recently we did a 5S project. Right. That's a, that's a podcast. Yep. That we need to we need we need to record. Yeah, we need to record that. <laughs> <laughs> but that sharing that type of information and then it expounded into or expanded into uh, interviewing top level executives mm-hmm. and yep. business owners and leaders in other markets, just understanding how how we can share and exchange yep. ideas, and that's really what it's been business about. leadership practices and strategies. Along the way, we've learned new business development yep. ideas. Yep which has expanded and, and carried on, uh, you know, the gear and everything that we have. Yeah. So I want to get into that in just, a, in just a few moments of the type of gear that we use and why we use the type yep. of gear that we use. But I also want to, to to share a bit of encouragement for anybody that's saying, hey, man, I would love to get started doing a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Do I really have to have all of this stuff and produce a video every week and all that? No. Yeah, you right, don't. It, right. It can be very, very simple. And we can talk about that as well of the simplistic way to get started yep. um, to communicate a message. But um, but then also talk about kind of the evolution of how we've arrived at this point and the reason that the things have been selected. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So you've been architect for a lot of this. Yep. Now Dan, who hopefully he'll pop a shot of himself in there. Dan is uh, running the, the control room right now. And that position uh, has grown out of yeah. the demand that we've had for the content creation side. Right. Which is really cool to, for us to be able to sit here and not have to worry about punching buttons. Yeah, I, no, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, like th- this is super exciting. One, uh, to have Dan on the team has been a, a huge, uh, huge asset already. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like a very huge uh, accomplishment for the lab to have uh, another employee. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, we can kind of go back a, right before COVID. And, and I would say that one of the things that I have paid attention to is our dedication or continuing of, of a process has opened up a lot of doors for the next season. Mm. So I would say that if anything that you get from this, start with the podcast, start with the base level, start with just producing content out there, mm-hmm. get good at it, mm-hmm. and then all, there there will be an opportunity open up just in your consistency of it. So uh, going back and missing a mic being on it, mm-hmm. those things that we cut our teeth on, those gave us the opportunity to do what really paved the way for what we're doing right now. So valid point. Yep. Years ago, I mean, you'd have to go back probably six years or seven years on our YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, we 
put out a couple of videos on how to use certain product types. Yeah. And those were all shot with not this particular one here, but with an iPhone. iPhone. That's some, hey, hold this yep. and let me record this. And that's where we started. But that was, you know, our first couple of uploads were literally recorded with, yeah. with an iPhone. Right. You can start wherever. You start wherever. And, and, and you'll figure out the, the investment that you need. And mm-hmm. I think that is a very, like, starting where you're at and mm-hmm. then thinking, okay, how can I make this easier by making an investment versus chasing product and chasing gear? Because I've been in this industry for 15 years. Mm-hmm. I've chased gear. Mm-hmm. But when we decided to make the switch to the cameras that we're at now, mm-hmm. I was probably the biggest stick in the mud because I was like, okay, it's going to add you know, X number of, of time because of this. We're on 6K cameras. Mm-hmm. I mean, so like we're shooting a podcast on 6K cameras and it, it we just had to figure out how to make it, it, it the process better. Now we're using those for outside client videos, yeah. but we want to dual purpose any product that we buy. So I think a big pushback that I get from other business owners a lot yep. is, is, man, in order for me to produce something, I've got to invest a lot of money and a lot of time, and, and I just don't see the necessity of it. And I want to I want to put a big caution in at the very beginning yep. by saying I firmly believe that anybody uh, can start at any level. Yep. But I also really would caution, and, and this is just from a business strategy perspective, get in your comfort zone and get in your strengths. Yep. So a lot of what you see here is uh, is based off of the fact that I've always been really intrigued and excited about video gear and and good content. Correct. And I'm not saying that I have a, a lot to do with where we are now, but getting started that was always a passion mm-hmm. for me. So I've invested a lot personally to get to that point. Right. And so to do it that way, and the reason I bring all that up is. Don't look at yourself in the same sense and say, well, you know, we, we've got to go invest X right. thousands of dollars into into gear. If that's not your passion point, then put your passion towards whatever it is that you're doing well. Right. And then use somebody else to, to create the content. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it doesn't, you, it's not necessary that you have to sit back because a lot of people go, well, man, in order for me to do anything, I've got to go buy this camera and this microphone and this and this and mm-hmm. this. And just because you have all that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to create good content. Right. That doesn't make the video, right? right. No, it, it doesn't. I, there's a YouTube channel that I follow. He's a guy named Pro, Paul Brody. He's a, ma- a machinist. And I've been in contact with their uh, the guy who produces the video. Mm-hmm. And we like I love their videos. They're mm-hmm. great. Their audio is great in a machine shop. Like I've just complimented them. The images are great. We were talking, and uh, he... Just let me know that he's shooting everything on an iPhone, mm-hmm. on a, a little tripod, and a wireless mic kit for like two hundred bucks. Yeah. So he's got like the the videos are phenomenal, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wait, I, I being the guy in the industry is like, are you serious? Yeah. Like you're doing this level of production on this little bit of gear, and that I think that's where we're at right now, like. Camera phones are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, focus on the audio. That is why we have invested. We have invested a lot of money in in the audio equipment to get good, clean audio. And that's just something that, from your background and from mine, I understand that people will watch. People will not watch a television with bad audio, Mm -hmm. but they'll sit in their car and listen to audio Mm -hmm. with no visuals. Right. So we make sure that our audio is the best that it can be, and we've canned. A podcast because mm-hmm. the audio <laughs> hasn't been uh, to our standard. Well, and and I think going back to and we've I think we've had podcast about this and recording about this before, but that the the gear never tells the story, right? The gear captures the story, but if you don't have the message that you're trying to share before you get started, yeah. then you might as well not invest. Just just because you and you buy a certain camera, and I've you know we've all had these right. conversations with people. Uh, I need to take pictures of of my kids or whatever. So I went out and bought a $3,000 camera. Right. Well, you've got to actually figure out what you're going to shoot right. first. And that's a whole different conversation. Yep. But having a structure of what message you're trying to share. And we fortunately had many, many, many years of yep. testing that out with yep. an iPhone yep. or a very simple camera to make the mistakes and learn through it. And once we started to kind of hone in on exactly the message that we were wanting yep. to share, that's when we started to to turn our attention towards making that audio and that video look better than yeah. what it could be. So let's paint a picture because 
we originally started the podcast room in the conference room, but mm-hmm. then you allocated a room in our facility yep. that was like what a eight by eight or a ten by ten. Yeah, it was about a, a ten by ten foot by twelve foot. Ten room. foot by twelve foot mm-hmm. room, and so uh, to kind of set up where we're at right now and being consistent in what we had and being you know comfortable in the gear that we had and the investment that we made mm-hmm. to kind of get us to where we're at right now because I think. Uh, I really would love a big takeaway for people is just to understand to be consistent in whatever you're doing. So the investment that you're going to make, Mm -hmm. be willing to make the investment of time as Mm -hmm. well as money. Okay. So for, we got a, we got a rolling switcher Mm -hmm. and we had uh, two GoPro cameras. Mm -hmm. And the idea was instead of just doing an audio based podcast, why don't we create it for multiple platforms? Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause we're going to do audio on a, on a, uh, uh, podcasting platform. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to do Facebook and YouTube mm-hmm. and we were streaming that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so our idea was to hit multiple platforms at one time, yep. right? Get the most bang for the buck. So we try to repurpose any content that we have. It's going to be written, written, uh, written up in a blog. It's going to have, you know, email going out. It's going to be visuals. It's going to have pictures. We try to be very tactical in any investment that we make from time or equipment that it multiplies. We understand the frustrations HOA board members and property managers face when deciding the best solution for their HOA and pool security. Should we use a keypad, hand out keys, or install a key card system? Do we even need cameras? These are some of the questions that are difficult to navigate, and we're here to help. At LockDock Security, we've spent over 20 years working with homeowners associations and property managers to find a system that best fits the pool and HOA needs. Camera systems for the front gate or front entrance, key card systems for the pool gates, or simply updating the gate so that it meets safety and code compliance. We like to take the guesswork out of the process to answer any questions and help find the right solution. Our mission is to help you protect your people and your property, and that includes pools. Contact our team today to schedule your free consultation for your community. Let's get into strategy. Okay. Because from to create a podcast, yep. and especially what we're doing now, yep. we've got we have multiple cameras. We typically shoot with three cameras. Right now we had six, but it looks like one just yeah, died. It, power, battery just went out in it. Sorry. <laughs> so, think, things happen, right? Yeah. So, um, but in order to do that, here, here's the rhythm that we have moved from and to. So mm-hmm. we were recording every week on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Yeah. That's you, when you were watching the podcast, we it were was happening sitting, live. Yeah, we were sitting and recording yeah. live and we changed for that. Why did we change from that process? Well, I, there were, there were multiples, but I think for the clientele that we were trying to get in the conversations, it was very limiting the people that could be available at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. But then also from a strategy from a production side, mm-hmm. it gave our, you know, the person who's writing up and sending these out and the content that we were able to, to connect with the podcast mm-hmm. was more intentional. We gave the clients on the podcast, the guests that were on the podcast, an opportunity to share. Mm-hmm. And so we created all of these avenues that gave us a little bit better tactical strategy. Now, the great part about it being at nine and being because is it was done mm-hmm. when we finished, right? Yeah, the the time investment was making sure that everything was set up, the gear was functioning and working, and then nine a.m. we we recorded and went live out to Facebook and YouTube right then. Yep. As soon as we finished, we hit stop. And we captured the audio out and uploaded it, which uh, we'll talk through the, exactly what that process was uh, or where we send it to. But that was the strategy. And by by 1030, yeah. that whole process was done. Done. 830 to 1030, two hours of investment of mm-hmm. just that day of. Yep. And we, we had that podcast. Yeah. Out. And so we made a little bit of investment on the audio processing equipment. So mm-hmm. that way we didn't have to do any post processing. Mm-hmm. And so... A lot of podcasts right now, they do everything and then they record it later and, you know, you know, process it and post. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a big discourager for a lot of people mm-hmm. because it's a time suck. And so it's like repetitive out of this. So, you know, I have a podcast that I do as well called the Coffee Snobs Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is a, we do everything post mm-hmm. and I... As somebody who has had to, I no longer edit the podcast, Mm -hmm. but man, it's just, it's so easy to do what we're doing now because when we're done with it, 
we are done with the audio. We've mastered everything. Everything mm-hmm. is good to go. And I think if you can figure out how to do that on your podcast or anybody who's going to start it, mm-hmm. like, hey, at the beginning, let's just be fine with what is being done and let's get in the pattern of, of producing stuff. Mm-hmm. And then if we want to, you know, polish it up, you know, after year one or after six months, then we can tr- go into the post-processing. But the first is just getting the rhythm. We got the rhythm down, and then we realized we could create an, a, a value elsewhere mm-hmm. by doing it not at 9 a.m. and doing it at different times. Yep. So then we started uh, on a process of yep. pre-recording. Right. That gave us the ability to, to have a little bit more flexibility in scheduling, but it still was consistently taking up some time every week. So right. we may record a guest on Thursday, but yep. then we may record one on Monday. It was kind of all over the place. And so we, but we were doing it on a, a predetermined setting mm-hmm. to where they could choose available times. Yep. And that's a big thing with guests, you know, making sure that you're flexible with their schedule, but also that it's, it's not intruding upon everything else that you've already got going yeah, on. Yeah, we did something that I think this was great that you and Jess implemented. And um, it it's a, gives the opportunity for the guest to pick what time they wanted. Mm-hmm. So what we did is we looked at your schedule and we looked at the schedule of everyone else and then we marked out the days that were not available. Mm-hmm. And then we gave opportunity for the guest to schedule their time. So they could set it whenever they wanted with, within the parameters of what we had given them. Mm-hmm. And so we were giving them multiple days, mm-hmm. which was great. And it worked for a while. Mm-hmm. And then after we had done that for, I think, what, probably six months, mm-hmm. we, we realized we could tighten it up a little bit more and we can consolidate these to Tuesday and Thursday, which would then work better with your schedule, work better with my schedule, work better with everyone's schedule, and then we could kind of tighten those up. So we've refined the process multiple times, but I think it's been after a season of continuously doing it mm-hmm. so we can really get the data and really understand uh, the value and really capitalize on the effort that we're putting in. So a couple of our core values in our organization is cultivating trust. Yep. And we believe to start small, have consistency yep. over time, that'll build trust. And that's a big factor in doing something like this is if you're going to say, hey, we're going to put out a podcast, find a level of consistency so that that an audience can trust the fact that there's going to be one there right. every Tuesday. I think we've had one time in the last two and a half years that a podcast didn't actually go out on schedule. Yep. There was an issue with whatever happened. And I had a couple of folks contact me like, Hey, what's right. up with the podcast? Right. There's an expectation that it was going to be there. So, um, but that, and that's, that's built consistency that builds trust with your audience. Right. So no matter if you're thinking about, Hey man, I'd really like to put a podcast together. My biggest challenge for anybody that ever talks to me about it is go ahead and figure out what you're going to want to talk about build a schedule and go ahead and pre-record several episodes before you release the first one. Yep. And then go ahead and build yourself a schedule for consistency and so that you can continue to maintain that upload yep. and you don't just put out six episodes and then you never have you never post anything else again. Yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about that because you've traveled. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I can remember one San, San Antonio trip yeah. where on a Tuesday you were there. Mhm. And you took the entire podcasting studio Mm -hmm. in a box on an airplane to set up and do a podcast at 9 a.m. And that's the level of dedication that the podcast started with. It was like, look, rain or shine, Mm -hmm. whatever, hell or high water, we're going to do this. Now, it may not be a conversation that's going to be applicable to everybody, but we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, dang it, we're going to make this happen. And I think... Uh, there are there are a lot of things that the lab is built on, and that is one of those things. We're going to be consistent in what we do. We're the product that we're going to deliver mm-hmm. is going to be on time, and what we say we're going to do, we're going to do it. There may be a point in time where we bring it back up and we read it really read aside. Mm-hmm. Is this worth the investment? But all of us going into the mindset of at the beginning. We're going to give this thing eight months, ten months, a year mm-hmm. of just being consistent in it is something that I don't think a lot of companies or people really value at this moment. Well, the hard part about starting anything is um, the consistency factor mm-hmm. because when you first start, I mean, there's thousands and thousands, millions, I'm sure, podcasts that are right. produced on a regular basis. And so it's just another another piece of noise. So the building the consistency is a big factor. And so you may not get the big response that you think that you're going right. to get. 
And so you get discouraged and give up. So that's one of the reasons I say build a schedule and then maintain that schedule of consistency and just keep it going because it will get traction. Mm -hmm. You just have to stay consistent with it. Right. Um, With that, you know, as we've as we've shifted, the the schedule has also shifted because there is so many other um, processes, I guess, that we have added to to make it more valuable Mm -hmm. for our audience and for, I guess, more of a distribution avenue. So um, as part of that, doing it ahead of time, Jessica uh, writes uh, an an article or a summarization of the the podcast and and promotes that out and pushes it out and schedules everything to go out on a time. So it gives her the ability to put the time in there. So the cool thing is, I want to, I want to go back to the early days because it's, it's really, a fun process to watch and, and dissect. When we first started, it was very much bootstrap. Right. Hit the record. Right. Go sit down. <laughs> right. right. I mean, there was times I had all kinds of gear sitting in my lap yeah. just trying to make it happen to then moving towards, well, we want to have actually better conversation, so we need to get the gear out of the way right. because it was distracting right. me. We get that out of the way get somebody there. Well, then, well, we actually, it'd be great if we could summarize what we talked about so that people could know and make a decision if they wanted to listen. So Jessica started writing that up. Um, And and just, there's been multiple layers that are added on top of that. And then we started um, doing a couple of different things from a post-production standpoint, adding some little graphics in and, uh, and things of that nature. And so then it kind of continued to take a step where it was necessary yeah. to have a little bit of a, a buffer between record and, right. and live. Right. And I think all of those processes that we've done, we have we've learned a lot as it's related to the lab content creation mm-hmm. side of the business. So I would say that the the Coffee Break podcast has been a guinea pig for a lot of the stuff that we're doing at this moment. The I I would I would tag on that and say that the Coffee Break podcast is better now because of the development in the lab, and the lab is better because oh, 100%, of the, 100%. the podcast. Like it's a it's a test ground for a lot yeah. of work. So w- we had uh, like right at the beginning of COVID, we mm-hmm. had a client that reached out to us, mm-hmm. and they contacted us and and wanted us to produce a live event for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they come to us with a blank page and they were like, look, we want multiple cameras. We want, we want guests from all across the United States Mm -hmm. to be remoted in and then be shared with 800 guests. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, this would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And so we took a lot of what we had done with the Coffee Break podcast Mm -hmm. and really started figuring out because we had already started bringing in a remote guest. Mm -hmm. So we knew how to do that. Mm -hmm. Then we had multiple cameras. We knew how to do that. We Mm -hmm. knew how to bring in lower thirds. We knew how to do that. We knew how to stream it. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that we had done created an opportunity Mm -hmm. that culminated together to where we did uh, four virtual events for them. Mm -hmm. And where at one point in time, we had 1,800 participants on a live stream Mm -hmm. that we were producing, that we had guests from all across the United States presenting live, Mm -hmm. and we were managing it. And that's why you see the gear that you do right now, okay? So, like, it was was an opportunity, and our opportunity to take massive leaps to provide a service for a customer that we had been doing, that you started back in August of 18, Mm -hmm. And it culminated together. Now I have history in the in the the virtual uh, mm-hmm. live production world, and you have audio. So I mean, it culminated together great. But I think our repetition, mm-hmm. our reps in the gym of this podcast, really kind of set us up for success when we had the opportunity to to go big time. Absolutely, and it gives you the ability to practice over and over and over again, sharing your story, right. sharing information, and being very. Uh, consistent or condensed in it, I guess. One of the interesting things that have, has come out of this podcast, and a lot of people don't know this, we record what what is considered live to tape. Yep. So we don't do any post editing as right. far as deleting any content. Right. Now, if you're watching this, there may be a commercial that drops in momentarily that is added in after after the fact, but it's just an insert. It's not yeah. um, it, it is not because we've made a cut. And so once we sit down and start with a guest, <laughs> it's 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 as live. it is. Yeah. Uh, it, until we hit stop. It is it is recorded through and I think that's one 
you have done so many reps and your, your uh, audio background has really helped in the curating of the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. So that is something that we pay attention to. I love telling stories. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, love sharing people's stories. Mm-hmm. So the way that we visually show this is to really help. The way that you ask the questions is to really uh, derive the conversation. And a lot of that comes through reps, though. It mm-hmm. comes through reps. So you will learn some things through doing a podcast mm-hmm. that will help you better when sitting at the table with mm-hmm. a client because you'll start asking questions or you'll know how to manage this because you've now done, I mean, I, what, what are we like? We're over 100 episodes easy. Yeah, I think we're, we're close to 150. Right, and so and you've, you've sat down and had these one-on-one looking people in the eyes because there's no other distractions in here. Like mm-hmm. when we're doing it, like we're making full eye contact. Well, speaking of distractions, yeah. that's one of the big big takeaways. Yep. So early on yep. when we started, we were sitting in a very small room, like you said, a 10 by 12. Right. And there were three people in that room, me, a guest, and Chris at the time, who yep. was kind of running the, the, the controls. And he was literally sitting, and we don't have the behind the scenes shot anymore because the camera died, but um, he was literally sitting, you know, five feet away. Yes. And... If anything was going wrong, then he was frantically right. over there trying to fix it, which was a distraction. Yep. Well, then over time, we we were able to move into the room that we're in now, which is a, a significantly larger room, but still everything was still was in the same room. And you at that point were sitting at the other. Now we put four people room. in there. <laughs> now we have four people in there. If something's going wrong, it's now a very heavy chaotic distraction, uh-huh. which brings us to kind of where we are now. Uh, And we've done this for multiple things because this room gets used for more than just the podcast studio. Right. We hope we have this. I don't think there goes a full day where this room doesn't get used for something. Uh. It might be a client video shoot. It might be a podcast recording. It might be a a Zoom meeting that we're having with a client or uh, or whoever. Yeah. Currently, this moment today, it's going to be used four times guaranteed. Yep. And I don't think there's been more than an hour and a half that somebody's not been in here. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a it's a heavily used room. Yeah. But so because of that, we had to separate the gear out one for more space and two so that uh, things could happen in the background without being uh, being messed up. So Dan is over there in in our control room. Uh, he's got that shot pulled up now. He can see all of the cameras in there. Uh, he can see uh, everything that's happening. And then it also gives the controls for all of our audio, all of the video. And we recently just uh, got a new a new switcher in, which is really cool. I know we'll talk about that, uh, kind of our gear list momentarily. But the reason that we've made those advancements is because it's used for more than just recording this podcast on a weekly basis. Yep. It is, again, being used for for our lab content creation as well. The reason I say all that and bring that up is because I want people to understand that um, oftentimes you, when, through iteration, you can learn and grow through that, and then people will be able to utilize the same space. So maybe you, maybe you go through a process and say, hey, we want to record a podcast for our company. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. Get it started. Don't just think about it as an investment for that one podcast. Right. Maybe you can record five. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can also do a weekly update that's a Facebook Live video. You can repurpose the gear in the same way you can repurpose the content, yep. repurpose the gear. Yeah. And I, I would say for a lot of businesses that are like our business, mm-hmm. you know, getting in front of getting your clients and telling your clients stories mm-hmm. is a massive value add. Mm-hmm. Okay. The clients call you to provide a service. Mm-hmm. But if you can feature them and and promote them mm-hmm. and say, hey, l- tell me about your story. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves to share their story. Yep. So there are a lot of clients that have been on here mm-hmm. that that are clients of the Lock Doc, mm-hmm. but we've given them the opportunity to share their story, and we're genuinely interested in sharing the story. Oh, yeah. This is not a. This is not just like a. Uh, what's the uh, like? Okay, really, why are you doing this? I mean, mm-hmm. we genuinely love telling people's stories mm-hmm. and hearing people's stories. Mm-hmm. And so that is a value add that I don't think a lot of people understand is getting the opportunity for someone to share their story and the buy-in that it has for taking the time to, to hear someone's story. Just a reminder, you're listening to the Coffee Break Podcast. Also, we wanted to let you know that our team puts together a weekly blog post. You can find it at locdoc.net slash blog. It's guaranteed to raise your IQ by 12 points or your money back. So it's pretty much a win-win. 
All right, back to the conversation. I have gained so much knowledge from sitting across right. this table from other people that you could look at all the investment of time, all the investment of gear, all the investment of people that are involved with this because it's not just me. Right. You know, there's there's a four people that uh, that are involved in this every week um, to make this happen. Yourself, Dan. Yep. Now Jessica spends a, a good amount of time. Yeah. I get to sit in here and have conversations with people after I do my prep work. Yep. Um, but you, you, it, it brings to the point of I've learned so much from the folks across the table right. that have impacted right. LockDock security. Right. So it is really an interesting investment of time because it has great dividends in many other it ways. It does. All right. I want to talk gear because I like gear and I don't want this episode to go away without gear, but I also want to be mindful of, of the time that we're, we're chatting here because I think we've probably well stated yes. kind of the the... Why people need to do a podcast, <laughs> right? do a podcast. So in our current state, uh, we are uh, – tell us a little bit about from from start to beginning or from start to end the type of gear that we use and why you've chosen it. And I don't know if you want to start at the camera yeah, side I'm or gonna, if you want to start, start at the, the microphone. Switcher. Okay. I'm going to start at the switcher side. At the okay? switcher, okay. So uh, if you want to punch up the, the control room there, boom, look at that. Okay, so all the buttons that are glowing – uh, down at the bottom, that is a the new Blackmagic Mini Extreme uh, switcher. It's a HDMI switcher, and so it's been uh, we've been on the Blackmagic switchers for quite a while now. Really, really love the platform of Blackmagic, uh, and then coming from that. Uh, we'll go to our cameras. And so all of the cameras in this room are the Blackmagic Cinema Pocket Cameras, which they're 6K. They are the EF lens uh, bayonet. And so we really love them. Now, out of the HDMI, it's all 1080. So it's, we're not fully recording 6K, but just for our geeky friends, they're going to you know be yeah. like, oh, cool. Uh, and then we use two, uh, two 24 to 70 Sigma 2.8 lens because we really love uh, shallow depth field and the bokeh, okay? And then our camera on the slider, which this is something that... Um, this was a new ad this within was the last ad. couple yeah, months. Yeah, this was a new ad. This is something that I wanted to add uh, to the to the system. And so we have a camera slider that just moves back and forth. And so for virtual meetings or uh, for the, the podcast, it's just really, really fun. And that is a uh, 18 to 35 Sigma. So all of our glass in here is Sigma. All of our tripods are Manfrotto. We have magic arms, C-stands. Uh, all of our lights are, most of our lights are JVM um, because we wanted to be, you know, mindful on, we're, we're definitely mindful in the budget that we spend because mm -hmm. we, we, we know that there's, you know, much higher end gear, but for what we're doing, it definitely does meet uh, everything that we have. And then we have a lot of LEDs. And the reason why we went with LEDs is the versatility. So if you watch these podcast, you'll know that almost every episode is a different color. Um, and for years we went with green mm -hmm. and so we just started to bring in some other colors and that's been, uh, intentional. We've just tried to do that. So, um, and because we shoot a lot of other videos in here mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that, um, that, you know, everything doesn't look the same. Yeah. Uh, because we did that for a while. Everything looked exactly the Everything same. Everything looked exactly yep. the same. So then now let's get to the audio. Okay. So uh, we a little well, went a little over the top in the audio uh, because we have a 32-channel uh, X32, which is a Behringer uh, uh, broadcast board, mm -hmm. um, and I love it. And we chose that for very specific very reasons. Very specific reasons. At the time that right. we needed it because right. we needed multiple, Outs. the ability to do multiple things with it. Yeah, and we, and we did because we ran through, I think, up until this point, I think we're eight uh, audio boards yeah. that we've been. So just know that we've made, we've we figured out all of ours and we had some great uh, wisdom come through mm -hmm. uh, um, from, from our, some of our friends. Um, you know, we're pretty smart, but there are other people out there that are a lot smarter than us and really helped us navigate to get us on this board. And so then from the board, we have, uh, we have quite a bit of wireless systems because mm -hmm. all of our other videos are headset microphones. Uh, we also use in-ears. Uh, so all of the monitoring system, we have in-ears. And so uh, some of the times while Chad is, uh, you know, producing the podcast, I'll be talking in his ear. Uh, and, you know, it's just it, it was a way for us to to make it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So that way, if a guest is doing something or if uh, if it's a talking point that we have, we can send it to him. Uh, and then our microphones on the desk are RE20s. Um, and so we've got blue microphone stands 
And then we have a breakout box that's back, which helps with cable management. But that's kind of a a, a fast overflow. We have some uh, Manfrotto Magic Arms in here as well. And so I know that was a lot of gear real quick. And, well, and, and we also have a separate section behind you sort of, yeah. um, that is set up for di- directly f- for virtual guests. Yeah, so remote guests. You know, remote guests. So if anybody that's uh, coming in from that, we switch over to that desk. Everything is kind of built into it. And one, a couple of things we've learned through studio management over the uh, the last couple of years is put everything on wheels. Yep, everything uh, on wheels. And every, nothing is permanent in here. So yeah. uh, it, it really doesn't go for about a week the way that it's set up before we, we twist yeah. things around. I think, well, a few weeks ago, we had four different, three different setups mm-hmm. in the entire, uh, for, the, for one day. Yeah. So we did a lot of hanging cables from the ceiling to make for the floor to be nicer because we had guests coming in. That was something that we tried very hard to do. Mm -hmm. And even currently the way that it is set up, a guest can come in one door and then we have the control room door, which has a lot more cables going to it, but we got cable troughs. Uh, You know, another thing that it would be hard to see, I think you can see it in the over uh, the overhead cam, but in that overhead cam, there's a TV with a multi viewer over here. And so we have, Uh, I think a 50 inch television and then a smaller television down there. And then we have camera that's on top of it with a Mm -hmm. clock. So we really try to make it as it is over the top Mm -hmm. for a podcast studio, but understand we're a production house. Correct. That is it's, it's over the top for a podcast recording, right? but it is baseline for video production. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But again, now the the versatility is uh, a a couple of weeks ago, I was teaching a virtual class. Right. And this room turned into a virtual classroom. Right. Utilizing the TV and the the displays there for presentation and to to interact with people. So it's the the versatility that we have structured in here is intentional. Yep. One for lockdown security and two for clients. Yeah. Um, And those are those are really big factors to to keep in mind. And then a really cool thing is what you're getting ready to talk about there. Before you talk about that, I do want to share real quick from a production standpoint uh, or or a uh, a distribution standpoint. Yeah. We use uh, Anchor. Yep. Dot FM. Yep. Which I think they just were recently purchased by Spotify. Gotcha. Um, but that, that's for our distribution platform. Yep. And it is a super easy, like, mm-hmm. like from a turnkey solution, like you can start it. It's free mm-hmm. and it's very easy to manage. Mm-hmm. So definitely look into it. I don't think we have affiliation links yet. We, and we don't, but you can you can do that, and then uh, you, it gives you the ability to post it on your website, yep. embed it on your website, and it pushes it out to all the podcast platforms. So a lot of people ask that, and you can also record your entire podcast on your phone right. just by simply using the app. So it gives you um, uh, the ability to to do all of those things and be able to, to distribute it out very easily. Yeah. We also use, on the video side, uh, a product called Restream. Dot I, uh, yeah, uh, that uh, takes our video and distributes it out to Facebook and YouTube uh, simultaneously. Yep. yep. So th- those are our two platforms. The Restream, I really love it. Like mm-hmm. there are a lot of other things that they do. R- Facebook and YouTube is just one like yep. small incremental, but it does a lot of stuff. That's how we're able to still do the 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. because we schedule it and upload it, mm-hmm. and then that way we can – write more content to it and do a lot more. But awesome. um, And then the other cool thing, yep. with the, with our security company, yep. we're very much cloud-based. Very cloud-based. Everything we do is cloud-based. You know, a lot of people don't don't believe us, but we don't have a server on site. Right. Everything is is direct to the cloud. Everything. Um and so and web-based and you have been able to make our studio web-based as well. Right. Yeah, that's been something that we've been because our company is web-based. Mm-hmm. It's been something that we've wanted to do. So any recordings that happen automatically get transferred to the web. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, for a while, Dan was working remotely. Mm-hmm. So everything that got recorded got recorded straight to Restream, and Dan pulled it down, and Dan was able to edit it. And mm-hmm. so then Jessica, who was remote, was able to, to manage it. And so mm-hmm. we've been able to do a lot of things through. Uh, but I wanted to – the Blackmagic Switcher, uh, this is an iPad, and this entire uh, – studio can be controlled by this iPad. Mm-hmm. The audio, uh, the video, the cameras, the adjustments, uh, the slider, everything, we kind of made it to where uh, nobody had to be the hinge pin for this. Because like you said, you taught a class. Mm-hmm. I was not here. Yeah. 
uh, I was actually hiking or doing something. Oh, no, I was working for another client. And you did the entire four-hour class in here with multiple camera switches, mm -hmm. with different audio, and you were able to do it all by yourself. And it's just because of the integration that we have in the studio. Yeah, so it's all tied back to uh, to, to uh, basically cloud-based where yep. you can we, you can operate everything from there. The, the, the mixer, the yep. console, the audio console, all of the switcher, everything is done that way, yep. which is very – it's a, a cool value add. Very cool. Uh, but again, the reason it's done is for simplicity's yep. sake – from a complicated scenario. Right. Uh, so anyways, we just wanted to share kind yeah. of a, how we do the podcast thing. Um, it's really cool to see it. And, and if you uh, if you want to understand the, uh, the advancements that have been made, you can go back and watch some of the old videos and right. you can see the difference. You can go back and listen to some of the old podcasts, and you can hear the difference. Yep. Um, and and hopefully that's the case because one another one of our core values at Lockdock Security is refined quality. Right. And we really hold that to the standard of we're going to do it the best that we can with the with the ability that we have. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we why we have chosen a lot of what we've chosen because we want it to be done well. Yeah. And represent yeah. Uh, everybody well. Yeah. It, and you know if you're ever listening to this and you're like I would love to know more or find out. You can definitely reach out to us, comment. Mm -hmm. We love to hear, you know, we love to share this stuff. This mm -hmm. is not like we don't hold this information. Like we're not like, you know, hoarders of it. Like we have a lot of clients that we have, you know, we could ha bring them into our studio. Yep. But we're like, hey, why don't you make your own? Yeah. You know, so we're not necessarily, um, you know, just in it to make a buck. We want to share the knowledge. Well, let's close out the podcast now so that yep. uh, so that yeah, Dan, Dan doesn't have to do a whole lot of editing. Yeah. If this is your first time watching or listening to the podcast, well, we invite you to subscribe because we do a brand new episode every Tuesday at 9 a.m. And you can subscribe uh, at lockdoc.net slash podcast. Links to all of the subscription or all the, the, the podcast platforms are there for you. So you can subscribe there and, uh, and check that out. We're also on video as well. And if you are just listening to this, you've got to go check out the video because you're going to get to see behind the scenes. It's all available on Facebook and YouTube. Just search for LOC, DOC, and podcast, and it's going to come up. There's over 150 videos out there that you can check out, um, and we're going to continue on bringing you new episodes every Tuesday all about business ideas, practices, and strategies. Thank you for joining us this time, and we'll see you next time right here on the Coffee Break Podcast.